My name is Nora Jones, and I'm 53 years old. I work at a university. On the surface, I seem happy with a job at a major conglomerate, a well-paid husband, and three lovely kids, but I've been troubled by my husband, Cody's behavior. Oh man. Being surrounded by girls all the time is suffocating. I wish we had a son. He says things like this right in front of our daughters. He also often stays out late, claiming to be at company parties, or says he's staying overnight at the office due to work, not coming home at all. I wanted to spend more time as a family but I had grown completely cold toward him. Then one day, he unexpectedly came home early. I was happy, thinking we'd finally have dinner together as a family. Your sister, who is adorable, can definitely has a boy. You're useless. Ha, huh, what do you mean? His words made no sense. So I asked him to clarify. That's why I want a divorce. Sorry, can you start from the beginning? I have no idea what you're talking about. You really are clueless, aren't you? Well, I guess it's no surprise since you work a cushy job at the university. Even though I asked him to explain, my husband just mocked my job. What do you mean by divorce? Useless. Did I do something wrong? Harper is pregnant. It's my child. What? Harper is my younger sister, 15 years my junior. The last time I saw her was when this house was completed, almost 20 years ago. Hearing her name, with whom I had no contact, left me even more confused. Harper is pregnant, and the recent test showed it's a boy. You probably know this, but my family and I need a son, so I want a divorce. His family has been producing city council members for generations, and my father-in-law is currently a councilman. He had high hopes for my husband as his successor. But since my husband took a job, he intended to make his own son a council member if he had one. So, he wants to remarry my sister, Fo is pregnant with a boy. Fine, understood, I don't need this house or child support, so don't ever contact me again, either of you. Really? I never thought you'd agree so easily. I've already grown cold toward you, with you hardly ever coming home. So this actually works out perfectly. I guess it's a win-win for both of us, then. Yes, I suppose so. I smiled quietly. I'll give you the divorce papers, so you go ahead and file them. Now, my father won't be able to complain and I feel a weight lifted off my shoulders. My husband had apparently been getting complaints from his father because he only had daughters. His family was thrilled about my sister being pregnant with a boy and fully supported this remarriage. My husband took out a suitcase and started packing his things. I'll be staying at my parents' place for about a week. So make sure you and the kids are gone by then. Got it. Hey, can I ask you one thing? What? He didn't stop packing and answered in an annoyed tone. Do you have any love for our daughters? He paused for a while, then said, I care about them, but a boy has more value to me. I see. I wanted him to answer immediately that they were precious. In that moment, whatever little feelings I had left for him crumbled away completely. Okay, so take care of the divorce papers. File them as soon as possible. 
I'll let you know as soon as I've submitted them. I said, and with a satisfied look, he left the house. There's no time to rest. I have to pack quickly and leave within the week. I explained the situation to my daughters when they came home, and the four of us got to work. Having long been fed up with their father's attitude, my teenage daughters were delighted about the divorce and began packing with more enthusiasm than I did. This is how, in five days, we finished everything and left the house we were so used to, heading to my parents' place. My parents own a company and are quite wealthy, so even without alimony or child support from my ex-husband, Cody, we can manage with my income combined. My parents supported me emotionally and assured me they wouldn't contact my sister at all. Each of my daughters was given her own room, and they seemed to enjoy being away from their father, finding it more comfortable than before. One day, as I returned from work, my mother stopped me. Cody called this morning asking for your contact info. I told him I'd check with you and hung up. So he finally called. Thanks, you can give him my cell number if he calls again. Are you sure about this? Yes, I have a pretty good idea of what he wants. Pleased that things were going as expected, I headed to my room with a smile. A few days later, I got a call from an unregistered number on my phone. Since mom had mentioned giving Cody my number, it was probably him. Suppressing a laugh, I answered. Hello. It's an emergency. Get over here right now. Cody sounded frantic, his breathing heavy on the other end of the line. We're divorced, remember, I have no obligation to rush over when you have an emergency. Just come. It's about our house. It's not my house anymore. Fine, I'm on my way. Run if you have to. As soon as I agreed to come, Cody hung up. Still as selfish as ever, Mom, I'm heading out to talk to Cody, so let the kids know I might be late. Mom looked at me with concern. Don't worry, I'm just going to listen to some foolish and pitiful people. I got into my car and drove to that house. Waiting there, pale-faced, were Cody and my sister. It had been nearly 20 years since I'd last seen my sister. She was approaching her 40s, but dressed in a way that didn't suit her age. A pastel-colored blouse and a white tight skirt, the kind of outfit a young office worker in her 20s might wear. Her nails were adorned with various decorations. Long time no see, Harper. You haven't changed a bit, have you? When I spoke, my sister glared at me from the corner of her eye. She sprang up from the sofa and lashed out at me in anger. We don't have time to reminisce. Because of you. We're in a huge mess. A huge mess? What happened? Don't play dumb. This is what's happening. Cody, who had been standing next to my sister, brought over a piece of paper and slammed it down on the table. An eviction notice, oh, so they are doing a redevelopment around here. Cut the act. You knew this house was going to be demolished, didn't you? I looked straight into the furious faces of the two standing before me. Yes, I knew. Cody clicked his tongue and let out a loud sigh. When I got this notice, I called the person in charge in a panic. They said they already talked to you, 
but this is the first I'm hearing of it. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was going to, but you never came home. I planned to tell you when we met, but then you suddenly asked for a divorce. I was so shocked. I completely forgot. I found out this house was targeted for redevelopment a week before Cody asked for a divorce. You could have just told me in an email. I did, actually, but who was it that blocked my emails? Every time I sent one, it bounced back. Well, that's... Realizing that he missed the information because of his own actions, Cody hung his head. Then you should have told me when you handed over the house. Who would worry about a man who cheated and had a child with someone else? Don't tell me you deliberately gave up this house to trap me. Do you see any other reason? Don't mess with me. When I learned of Cody's betrayal, I decided to stay quiet about the eviction as a form of revenge. Even the gods would forgive me for that much. The house is in your name, and you paid most of the mortgage, it would have been awkward for me to take it anyway. As I acted all modest on purpose, Cody and my sister turned red like tomatoes. We have a child on the way, and now, with the house gone, it'll be a huge burden on Harper. What if she has a miscarriage? You'll get compensation from the city. Until the new house is built, you can rent a nice apartment. You're having the precious boy, after all. I'm sure your father will help out. Yeah, but... No, it has to be this house. My sister screamed like a spoiled child. I didn't know you were so attached to this place, Harper. We finally got a big house, and even if we move, there's no guarantee we'll find a place as good as this one. Harper, yeah, you're right. My sister insisted it had to be this house, and Cody wanted to fulfill her wish. He potted her back, trying to calm her down. Why are you so obsessed with this house? Because I was jealous. Jealous? I was jealous that you married a high-earning husband, who built you a dream home. So I wanted to take it all away from you. Is that because you failed at marriage twice? My sister's cheek twitched as if I'd hit a nerve. Mom had told me you divorced twice, but I never thought you'd target my husband this time. You've always gone after what others had. Where did you meet Cody? I ran into him at a bar. We hit it off from there. Harper knows how to have a good time with people. You, on the other hand, only ever talked about the kids. You were hardly ever home. I had to say whatever I needed to when you were around because Fu knew when I'd see you next. Don't blame this on me. Hmm. It's all your fault for not having a boy. My father kept nagging me, and it wore me down. Harper was the one who saved me. Even if she wanted to take everything from me and make me miserable, even if she deliberately planned to have a child with you and marry you, you don't feel any anger. Yeah, regardless of how it started, I'm grateful to Harper for getting pregnant with a boy. Thanks to her, I'm on good terms with my folks again, and they've started giving me money, too. His dad has really been kind to me. He says he wishes he'd married me from the start instead of you who only had useless girls. My sister sniggled up to Cody, and he put his arm around her shoulder. With my salary and my dad's support, and now that the three kids are out of the picture, we have a lot of financial freedom. It feels amazing to spend money however I want. 
So you're saying our daughters were just a burden? I wanted a boy, so to end up with three girls in a row, even though I work for a big company, I hardly had any money to spend freely. I'm grateful that at least you never said that in front of my daughters. Really? I should thank you too. I feel so relieved after the divorce. So, you two agreed to be content with this remarriage, then? Of course. This time, I'm going to be happy. Then you'd better agree to the eviction soon. Oh right, that's what I called you here for today. We got off track, and I almost forgot. We're not leaving. This is our house, after all. Why should we be evicted? My sister sat back on the sofa, looking tired of standing. If that's how you feel, you can refuse the eviction, but you'll only be making things harder on yourselves in the end. What do you mean? If you keep refusing to leave, you'll be subject to a forced eviction. Forced eviction. Hearing those ominous words, they both looked frightened. Evictions have legal force. If you don't leave, you could face forced removal. So either way, we have to leave this house. It'd be wiser to comply. I gently advised them. That's nonsense. You're just exaggerating to scare us. I was giving you a heads up, not many ex-wives do that for their cheating ex-husbands. I'm not falling for it. You just want this house back. I'm not letting you have your way. It says right there, redevelopment. Even if you gave up the house, I can't buy it. I'm not leaving. I'm the owner. The government can't just take it away. Fine, then. Let's see who gives in first. This big house is mine. Why don't you and the kids squeeze into a tiny apartment? Didn't I mention, I'm back at my parents' place now. There's plenty of room, way more than such this house. Such this house. I didn't need this house even without the eviction. My parents had been wanting to live with me for a while. So it worked out. What? I was planning to take that house. You being there would just be in the way. Didn't mom and dad tell you? They said they wouldn't be in touch with you anymore. They even made a will to ensure you don't get any inheritance. What? That's not fair. Not fair. You took my husband and expect too much. You broke up a family. So that's just the price you pay. When I said that sharply, my sister fell silent. Well, I'm heading home. You two take care. We'll see if this house is still here next time we meet. It won't go the way you expect. No way. This should be interesting. Well, bye-bye. I said my farewells to the two glaring at me and drove back to my parents' house. Two years passed, and my daughters were now in college, high school, and middle school, each enjoying their lives. I was still working at the university, leading a peaceful life. One day, my phone, sitting on the glass table, vibrated with an unpleasant noise. When I checked the screen, it was an unknown number. Hello. I paused the TV series I was watching and answered the call. Hey, it's me. It's me. Is this some kind of scam? No, it's Cody. Oh, I'd completely forgotten about you. What's up? Please, you have to come to the house right now. So the house is still standing. Well, that's a surprise. Please, I need to talk to you. I'm begging you. 
It's not like I can see you begging over the phone. All right, I'll come over now. Yes, come quickly. It's been two years since then. By now, it wouldn't be surprising if it had come to forced eviction. I kept my excitement in check as I drove over. Returning after two years, I found that the surrounding houses had already been cleared, leaving this one standing alone. It stood out so much that passers-be were whispering and looking at it with curiosity. How have you been? Cody, whom I hadn't seen in a while, looked gaunt, his cheeks hollowed. My sister had also lost her former shine and now looked older than her age. I could guess what had happened to these two. Without asking, this area has gotten quite lonely. Your house really stands out. It looks like a pathetic house clinging on, refusing to leave. We finally got the notice for forced eviction. Cody muttered in a faint voice. I figured as much. I did warn you. I never thought it would actually come to this. Please, Nora, help us. Help you? And how exactly would I do that? We, we need money. I couldn't help but laugh through my nose in disbelief. You need money, don't you mean you want to borrow it? Well, that is. Don't you think that's a bit too much? Do you realize how shameless you're being? But. Harper, let me handle this. Nora, I'm swallowing my pride to ask you this. Please, give us some money. You're sticking with give us. Why do you need money for the eviction? The government should be covering that. Well, since we refused to leave till the very end, they said they wouldn't give us the amount we wanted. So, they won't give you more than the initial offer. The time you spent stalling was meant for negotiating and increasing the payout. That's why I warned you. With that amount, we can't build a house like this one. You'll have to accept that. This is a mess you two created. You'll have to make do with what you have. It's not right to come to me for money. Please, do something. Nora, please. Unlike two years ago, they were now desperately pleading with me. They really wanted to live in a big house that badly. Knowing their pride, they couldn't accept a modest home. They must have thought it was better to swallow their pride and ask me for help. Even if I don't give you money, you have a good salary, and you get support from your family. Well, the thing is, I quit my job. You quit your job? After everything, I decided to become a city council member like my dad and resigned. I'm shocked. You used to hate the idea. Harper said city council members were so cool. I was just saying it. If you don't get elected, you're basically unemployed. You didn't know that, did you? At my words, Cody's shoulders trembled. So, you're not working now. You lost the election. I, I lost. He mumbled, barely audible, but I caught the word lost. Even with your father's reputation as a city council member, it didn't work out. Word got out that I left you for Harper and then quickly had a son. It became gossip around the neighborhood, and somehow, Everyone found out I had an affair with my wife's sister and remarried. So, your father's reputation as a city council member tanked. He lost his re-election. Your family's income is now zero, and you quit your job, so you have no income either. 
My dad cut off his support, and he blames me for his loss in the election. He hasn't spoken to me since. Oh dear, that sounds tough. See, your parents won't take Harper's calls either. We're at a dead end. You're the only one we can turn to. Cody and my sister pleaded with me again. What about your savings? I figured my dad would keep giving us money, so we spent nearly all of it. It's awesome. Did marrying Harper make you lose your mind? What? Are you mocking me? You keep going after married men and end up miserable every time. What else can I call it but foolish? Don't get cocky just because we're asking for help. You're just a plain, boring woman who can't get remarried, so you're jealous of me. Hey, we're the ones asking for a favor here. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well then, let me say what I need to say. I took my phone out of my bag and started to operate it. What are you doing? Since you says it doesn't matter anymore, I'm going all out too. Oh, here it is. I pointed the phone at them and showed them a picture. This is Harper and who is this guy? How did you get that? Harper, it's not smart to cheat in your hometown. You'll get caught immediately. Harper. I recognize this guy. Isn't he your old boyfriend from high school? So it's still going on, ha? Huh? You were cheating. No, we just ran into each other and had coffee to reminisce. Coffee at a hotel? That's an interesting place for a coffee date. Want to see the picture of you leaving the hotel? Stop it. My sister snatched the phone from my hand and frantically deleted the photos. Deleting them is useless. They're saved in the cloud too. I can't believe this. You were cheating. I deeply despised Cody's double standard. He cheats but can't tolerate others doing the same. It's not like you have any right to be mad, Cody. Their argument got so heated that it seemed like it could be heard outside the house. To calm things down in a different way, I told Cody something. Are you sure the child is really yours, Cody? What do you mean? Harper was still seeing her ex. She said she was pregnant with your child, but is it really yours? Don't say weird things. Cody is the father of my son. Cody seemed unsure whether to believe her or not. He crossed his arms and stared at her intently. Lying isn't good. You might as well tell him the truth. I don't know what you're talking about. I spoke to your ex. What? You were seeing your ex while you were cheating with Cody. The timelines overlapped. So, you really were cheating? When you got pregnant, you went to the hospital together, didn't you? But you were also with Cody, so you got worried and did a DNA test. And guess what? The father was your ex. That's a lie. Your ex even proposed to you, but you turned him down, didn't you? That idiot couldn't keep his mouth shut. I know why you turned him down. His income was much lower than Cody's, wasn't it? My sister clenched her fists, her body trembling. Your ex was heartbroken. He said it was painful not being able to raise his own child. So I told him I'd help. So, this is what you meant by exposing it in front of Cody. Exactly. And it's awful, isn't it? Being chosen over someone else just because your ex made less money, right, Cody? 
I trusted you. You cheated. And the child's father is another man. You've got to be kidding me. Cody slammed his hand on the table and stood up from the sofa. My sister screamed in surprise and shrank back. My life is ruined and it's all your fault. You lied to me. I only tried to fulfill your wish for a son, didn't I? My dad's no longer a city council member, so I don't even need a son now. Why should I raise a child that isn't mine? Divorce. What are me and the child supposed to do? Why don't you go to this ex or whatever? I lost my job because I was deceived. Figure it out yourself. You're cruel. I'm the one who wants to cry. Cody and Harper looked utterly defeated, both staring at the floor. These two would probably divorce, which meant I wouldn't have to give them any money. I slung my bag over my shoulder and turned to leave. At that moment... Where are you going? Where, you don't need me anymore, the rest is up to you too. Wait! Eek! Cody grabbed my arm and pulled me back forcefully. Let go of me. Nora, can we try again? Don't be ridiculous. Why would I get back with you? I know it's late, but I realize now how much you meant to me. Living away from the kids made me feel so lonely. I want to be a family with you all again. Does this man not remember what he said two years ago? You told me my daughters weren't worth more than a son. How could I ever trust you again? No, I'm not taking you back. But don't the kids need their father? Aren't they feeling lonely? Not at all. What? In fact, when we left, they were even more excited than I was to pack up. Since moving to my parents' place, they've been saying it's more spacious and peaceful without a dad who only criticizes. That can't be true. It is, all three of them say so, and the oldest is already in college. It doesn't matter to her anymore if she has a father around or not. Realizing he was no longer needed, Cody collapsed to the floor, his body going limp. We've been living happily without you for a long time. Don't interfere. I have no intention of ever seeing you again. You won't even let me see the kids. That's up to them. At least until they become adults, I don't plan to let you see them. If they decide they want to meet you, I'll give them your contact info. Please. Honestly, I doubt that day will ever come. Don't get your hopes up. I shook off Cody's grip on my arm and briskly headed for the door. I heard Cody and my sister hurrying after me. Nora, I'm really sorry. I regret everything. Could you please talk to mom and dad for me? Ask if I can live with you at home. And could you tell the kids something for me? That their dad wants to see them. And could you also tell them that I want to make things right with their mother? So I hope they can forgive me. I finished putting on my shoes, placed my hand on the door, and turned to face them. For the both of you, absolutely not. With that, I flung the door open and stepped outside. The blue sky stretched out above, and warm light poured down. I walked away, feeling lighter than ever. Later on, I witnessed the demolition of the house that had been marked for eviction. I heard that they divorced. My sister wasn't allowed back home, and now lives with her ex in a 30-year-old apartment. Cody went crying to his family and is currently staying with them while searching for a new job. 
As for me, I'm excited because my daughters and I are going on an overseas trip this summer vacation. I think we'll continue living without ever remembering Cody's existence.